Hi everybody. So this is the first of three screencasts that I'm going to post up to YouTube. And I want you to watch all three of these screencasts and um, come to class on Thursday with any questions that you have that about the material that was presented um, in any of these presentations. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I want to update you guys on the schedule. So if you look at the the new version of the schedule here. We have um, our paper discussion, which was supposed to take place on the Thursday before spring break, is now going to take place next Tuesday. Um, this is what I want you to do uh, for this week. This week we're going to be talking about Mendelian genetics. So today we're going to be, um, I'm going to be introducing you to Mendelian genetics. And then on Thursday when you come to class, you will have a quiz which will cover the material that was presented in class before spring break and the material that is covered in these three screencasts. Okay. Also on Thursday, what I want you to do is bring the hard copy of the research paper that um, we asked you to find in the assignment four that you were to do and turn in today. Okay. On Thursday, we will talk, continue talking about Mendelian genetics. We'll work through some problems, and hopefully we'll actually get to an activity that is focused on pedigree analysis, which I think you guys will really enjoy. Over the weekend, you'll read the paper that um, you found as a part of Assignment 4, and we'll have a little paper discussion on Tuesday. And then on the Thursday and Tuesday before your next exam, we're going to start population genetics. Hopefully we will get to the sickle cell computer exercise um, right before the exam. If not, we'll start that exercise after the exam. Okay, so let's get going with the lecture today. Today what we're going to be talking about is Mendelian genetics. Um, I'm going to um, tell you a little about who Gregor Mendel was. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, pea reproduction and the types of crosses that Mendel made. Um, and we're going to talk about the principle of segregation, the structure and function of Punnett squares, the principle of independent assortment, and the chromosome theory of inheritance. In this screencast, we're probably going to get through a discussion of who Gregor Mendel was and talk a little bit about P reproduction. And then the next screencast, we'll talk about, we'll introduce the principles of of segregation, we'll talk about the structure and function of Punnett squares. And then in the third, third screencast, we'll talk about the principle of independent assortment and the chromosome theory of inheritance. So first off, Gregor Mendel. Um, Gregor Mendel um, really was responsible for revolutionizing biologists and scientists' ideas of heredity. Um, remember that Mendel, an interesting fact about Mendel is that he actually published his work while Darwin was alive and while Darwin was working on um, his theory of evolution by natural selection. But Darwin never read about Mendel's work and so he remained largely ignorant of the fact that Gregor Mendel actually discovered the basic rules of heredity. Um, if Darwin had known about that, it probably would have really revolutionized his ideas about evolution by natural selection. Uh, Gregor Mendel was an Augustinian monk. monk. He was extremely intelligent. He was also, um, he also grew up and was practicing his religion in a very rural community and had a very good understanding of farming. And all of these things really, really helped him in understanding the basic rules of heredity. He was primarily interested in testing two hypotheses um, of heredity, the two most accepted hypotheses out there before 1865. And those were blending inheritance and the inheritance of acquired characteristics. Um, in the, the hypothesis of blending inheritance, um, the idea was that traits observed in a mother and a father blend together to form traits observed in the offspring. So for example, if a father had yellow flowers and the mother had red flowers, in all of their offspring, the trait for flower color would blend together and would produce orange flowers. Okay, This seems like an absurd 
um, idea at this point because if you think about it from a human physical standpoint, if that were indeed um, a viable um, rule of heredity, then eventually all humans would sort of look alike, right? So it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting idea that kind of hung around probably a little too long. And then you guys will all remember the, um, the idea of inheritance of acquired characters or acquired characteristics that was proposed by, by Lamarck. And, um, and that idea was that traits that were present in, in parents were modified through use and those traits that were used the most were then passed on to their offspring in, in, in a, a slightly modified form which is also a little absurd um, in many ways and was very quickly discredited, but Mendel was really good at um, really thinking about and testing these rules of heredity. Because Mendel um, grew up in a rural, or was practicing his religion in a very rural community um, and, and knew a lot about farming um, and knew a lot about um, plant reproduction and how to uh, to reproduce plants, he actually chose as his model organism for testing these hypotheses the pea plant or Pisum sativum. In fact, the pea plant was the very first model organism ever used in genetics. And um, the mo a model organism, there are lots of model organisms that are used in science today, um, and most of those model organisms are used in research because they're practical, in other words, they have appropriate reproductive cycles, they're easy to maintain, and that most of the conclusions that you draw from any experiments using model organisms are easily applied to other species. And Pissum sativum fit the definition of a model organism pretty well. Um, it was easy to grow. Um, Mendel had greenhouses where he, um, where he grew these pea plants that pea plants had a very short reproductive cycle, so he was able to um, observe uh, multiple generations actually pretty quickly. Um, each of the pea plants produces many offspring, so there are many seeds produced by matings. Um, it was very easy for Mendel to control the mating of pea plants, and I'll explain why that is based upon the structure of the pea flower. And the traits in the pea plants were very easy to recognize. You either had purple flowers or white flowers. You know, you either had tall plants or short plants. You either had green seeds or yellow seeds or wrinkle seeds or round seeds. So it was very easy to recognize traits in the pea plant. Now, the really important thing here is that the pea plant was such a clever choice for Mendel, mainly because of, of many, many plants, man, this thing is so easy to control as far as mating is concerned. And I wanna explain why. It has to do with the structure of the flower. If you look at the structure of a flower of a pea plant, you have a female reproductive structure, which is down here, and this is called the ovary. And within each ovary are egg cells contained within these little green structures down here. This ovary is connected to a long stalk at the tip of which is a very, very sticky surface that's called a stigma. The male structures of the flower are, consist of these little filaments here, the anther at the tip, which contains pollen grains, and within those pollen grains are sperm cells. Okay, so each flower has both male and female structures. What's, what's really cool and um, was very convenient for Mendel, though, was that each of these, these reproductive structures are actually covered by uh, a petal that's called the keel petal. Okay? In the wild, what happens is a bee has to come in, pull this keel petal back. It should actually come in from this direction. Pull this keel petal back to access the nectar and then to affect pollination. This protective covering of the keel helped to ensure that no accidental pollinations happened during Mendel's experiments, which is really, really important. In order to affect 
uh, reproduction in these pea plants, what he would do was he would take the pollen grains containing the sperm cells from a, a, a particular plant, in this case a, pur a purple flowered plant, and he would apply them to the female structure of another plant, in this case a white flowered plant. He would then allow for those sperm cells to fertilize the egg cells within the ovary and then look at the resulting offspring. He did one other clever thing, which was to make sure that the plant didn't fertilize itself because these pea plants can actually fertilize themselves. That is a pollen grain from one flower can actually fertilize the egg cells from the same flower. He was really smart and he went in and he essentially removed all of the male organs from the, the plant that he was going to use as the female recipient of, um, of the pollen grains. And so he was very easily able to control mating. Okay. All right, this is where I'm gonna stop in the screencast and we'll start with um, discussing the law of segregation in the next one. Bye.